How would you evaluate how the Browns are approaching this offseason? Well, I think they were going to be successful in the offseason in terms of an evaluation of it because that's what Andrew Barry's done in the two years as a general manager. You know, the first year you wanted to get offensive line help, you wanted to get tight ends, fullbacks, so you could run Kevin Stefanski's offense, and they did that getting, you know, Jed Wills and Jack Conklin and bringing in Andy Janovich and getting Austin Hooper. And then in year two, the approach was we need to help on the defensive side of the ball. And so you go out and you get John Johnson, you draft Greg Newsom and Jeremiah Wusu Cormo, you bring in Jadevian Clowney, Anthony Walker Jr. So He's been successful. Now this year, the task is a little bit different. We've got to really get our passing game to the level that you need to be to compete in the NFL. And part of that will be getting Baker Mayfield healthy again so we can see you know, the great play we saw from at the end of 2020. And then I think you need to address that receiver room. And, and for the Browns, you know, this draft seems to line up very well for them, fortunately, at pick number 13, if they do decide to go with a receiver. Uh, they probably have to do some succession planning at the edge position because Clowney's a free agent. You want to get him back, but you probably need another guy in the mix as well. So And it, it also so it sets up well for that position. But I think that AB will be prepared, and I think we'll do a good job there. But as you well know, this is a very competitive division, and uh, every team here, I think, feels like they have real aspirations for the postseason again. After the Bengals having such a successful season, what are some of the areas that you are all feeling really strongly about coming off of a Super Bowl appearance? Yeah, well, I mean, it was just exciting to get to the Super Bowl. Almost feels like the team was a little ahead of schedule, especially when you look at like what national media had been saying about this team. But when you, for the Bengals in 2021, I mean, the offensive explosion and firepower is what really, I think, set them apart. I mean, the Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase connection is one that hasn't gotten old and it's not going away anytime soon. It only seemed to get stronger as the year progressed. And, and just what they were able to do on offense it really carried them down the stretch. I know the defense stepped up majorly at times, especially in the second half of the season, second half of games. Uh, the two games against Kansas City really come to mind where they were able to hold the Chiefs to three points uh, in the second half in each of those appearances. But the, the Bengals offense, I mean, looking forward into the future is definitely just going to be one of the bright spots of this team. Definitely some fun positives, but you also have to look at some areas of concern. So what do you think some of the weaknesses are coming into offseason? Well, I think the biggest one everyone's talking about is the offensive line and protecting Joe Burrow. He cannot take that many quarterback uh, hits and not that take many sacks. So improving that area in some regard, whether it's the draft or free agency, it has to be one of the top priorities for the Bengals this offseason. You also look at the other side of the ball um, on that defensive line. There are a couple of guys are free agents and Larry Ogunjobi and B.J. Hill in that interior. We also need to add a pass rusher. Outside of Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard, the production fell off quite a bit. They have a young guy in Joseph Osai who uh, was injured in the preseason last year, so you're hoping he can maybe take a step forward, but you haven't seen a lot of him, so you're not entirely sure what what he's going to be like now in his second year in the league. So they have to add some kind of depth, add another pass rusher there on the defensive line. And then you look at cornerback and really trying to add another piece into that rotation. I thought Chidabe Awuzie, Mike Hilton, who you guys are familiar with, and then um, Eli Apple played pretty well. But getting them another solid piece there at corner who can rotate in and you're not going to miss a beat um, is, is really going to be a top priority for this team as well. What are your general thoughts on how the Ravens should approach this offseason? Yeah, I think that when you look at this team, they got hit really hard on the injury front last year at a variety of positions. The two ones that really stand out, offensive line and cornerback. I think that they will address the offensive line at some point in this draft, maybe with a couple of picks. And it would not surprise you if they end up using their first round pick on an offensive lineman this year. Maybe they use the free agency market to address the offensive line. And then with corner, I mean, there's some really talented cornerbacks in this draft. So I think Part of it depends how the board falls, but they're going to draft a cornerback as well. I mean, those two positions, I think, will certainly be addressed at some point. And the Ravens have had a lot of success drafting both of those spots. The last time they took a first-round offensive lineman, they got Ronnie Stanley, who was a terrific player, and he's been a you know all-pro left tackle. The last time they picked in this mid-round range, they're at 14 this year. The last time they picked in that range, they got, they got Marlon Humphrey and they got C.J. Mosley, two dynamic players. So I think they're going to have options. Uh, depending on which way they want to go. And I think it'll be interesting to see how they address it. I know it's not your decision to make, <laughs> but in your opinion, what would the perfect free agency and maybe first round of the Ravens draft look like? I think if the Ravens could add maybe a ball hawk on the back end of their defense, that would be great. Um, again, whether that happens in free agency or whether that happens in the draft. I, I think that when I look at the draft, I've made this joke, you know, on, on some of our stuff is that it would, uh, the Ravens could end up drafting 
all these guys who are over 300 pounds because they want to build up in the trenches. And I spent time talking about the offensive line, the injuries that they dealt with there last year. I think that they will end up addressing that offensive line spot. It would not surprise me at all if they take a tackle at number 14. And then in terms of adding a ball hawk, I think maybe that happens in free agency if a certain play, if certain players become available, if certain guys get cut. So I, they have gone that route in free agency in the past in terms of adding safeties. So that could kind of be the perfect scenario if it plays out that way. And again, I, I, the Ravens have a ton of picks. And there's still going to be a team that builds through the draft. So maybe they dabble a little bit in free agency and then use the draft to kind of rebuild and restock the fridge with good young talent.